Well. Um, the done is still our job. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, now we're on the clock. Um, who have we got here in this picture? All right. Let me just, just put this here. Uh, this individual here is, his, his name now is, is Rockland Williams. He's a South African uh, quote-unquote general who was uh, with the army of the, the white army in South Africa, who was actually a double agent uh, for, the, for Mandela's forces. He's an assassin, a murderer, and... Uh, Did you guys tell you of any murders that he committed? Any people or any situations? Like he, he stayed um, there with us. Uh, he was a guest of the State Department, and my husband arranged... This is my husband here. This is um, a gal in our church, Carla, whom I thought would be interested in going along with us that day um, because of the South African connection and Mandela and so forth. She's, she's a, another battered um, military wife um, who lost a child. And um, anyway, she uh, is a very bright lady. And uh, we... What this guy's name again is? Rockland Williams. He studied in Great Britain after this. Does he have any Got a doctorate. Name? Yeah. He... Uh, is very interested in Ireland. I think he's basically um, sort of part of that IRA kind of underground. Um, but his father, interestingly enough, um, came over to North Carolina as one of the um, sort of underground trainers, trainees, or during World War II, they had a, a number of training bases um, for uh, communists. Okay. In, in this country. And his father trained and lived in North Carolina, but was not from America, which is interesting. All right, now we're on the picture on the right, uh, an individual laying down. That's your husband. Yeah, uh, my husband was a, a rageaholic. Uh, during Vietnam, he had to kill a number of people and lots and lots of people, and he was suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. And the interesting thing to me is that he cannot control himself when he is drinking or e either at odd times he goes into what's called a berserk state. Okay, so this is one of his cast out stages? Yeah, yeah. And yet he was chief of staff of the... Uh, yeah, this picture is um, of, of me and Sarah McClendon and General... Um, Carl Mundy, who became the Commandant of the Marine Corps after Al Gray, for whom my husband was Chief of Staff. Um, this was at a party at 8 and I Street at the Marine Corps uh, Commandant's house. It was a garden party for the Secretary of Defense. He's a good guy or bad guy? Oh, bad guy. I mean, he knows what's going on and doing nothing about it, ordering hits and um, and where was this taken again? It was in Washington, D.C. at the Marine Corps Commandant's Garden Party in August of 1996. It was a garden party for the Secretary of Defense and the Marine Corps Commandant who, Krulak. Who, who would have taken this picture? Uh, one of the military photographers, but they stole. I had um, at least six pictures of that garden party, uh -huh. and I would because they were coming in my house and stealing pictures. Um, this is the only one I have of, of that, but it's a picture of a picture, because they didn't want uh, me to, to have any proof that I had been there, but I was there. Okay. Um, this is a picture of my husband's, uh, supposedly his retirement, from the Marine Corps, which he, you never retire, according to my husband, from the Marine Corps. You're always um, a mercenary, and uh, you work under the New Orleans 4th Marines, which are under a different kind of law than, than our country. Uh, Napoleonic law is the law of, of Louisiana. And um, my husband was always going down to Louisiana. They have a, a training school for assassins 
they kind of hop around from Lake Pontchartrain to here and there. And, uh, this is General Albrey, who was the commandant of the Marine Corps um, at that time when my husband retired. Uh, my husband was his chief of staff. This is my husband, George Raymond Griggs. Okay, hang on just a second. Let's get, uh, let's get a good shot of Gray here. Okay, who's the guy next to Gray? Uh, this is my husband's son. Uh, he's not this quite one? right. Yeah, he's, he's kind of a little bit of a... Um, he's not right. And the lady? That's... Um, the, the commandant's wife, he married her very late in life because he needed a third star. Now, who's the commandant? Al Gray, and, and her name is Jan Gray. She, is she a good lady? She worked has for... Has potentials? She has potentials. She worked for him in his... See, even when he was general, there, he ran an intelligence uh, operation, which was a contract organization trying to hook politicians and get them. Uh, what is the word? In other words, Al yes, yes. He has and still had and still has an organization which um, brings in whores, prostitutes, whatever you want, want to say, who will compromise politicians so they can be used. Jan worked for him in that organization which was not part of the military. She was a hooker. Well, Paul, I don't know. She's, she chain smokes, she sleeps with the dogs and stuff. But when his mother was ill, when he was at FMF Lant, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic, yeah. um, Jan came to stay with his mother because she was on sedation and she may have talked too much mm -hmm. uh, to keep an eye on the mother. And then he, he married her because he he would not have made, um, gotten his third star or whatever without having been married because he is a homosexual. He's a well-known um, group sex homosexual. Okay. Um, and that's my husband, that's me, and that's my son, Garland, who's now married, and I have two grandchildren. This is a copy of my husband's diploma from the NATO Defense College at Rome. Okay, he was in the 56th course there. Okay, again, this is the... NATO Defense College, which is part of the of, of NATO North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Okay. Um, he also worked for NATO, and I was the head of the... Uh, uh, on the board of the NATO Wives Club. This is just, you know, the Norfolk branch of NATO. Some secret papers that he had in the house, of course, he shouldn't have had. Uh, these were operations that were going on, okay. amphibious operations. These were just some landings in Norway and uh, different brigades and names. Okay. This is an original um, of... Uh, a memorandum from when he was at NATO. And um, <laughs> this is a funny picture. I just uh, heard about Moshenko was going to be at a book signing, and I kind of was curious to know whether he had even known George and so forth, and he did. And he that's a picture of me with, with Richard Moshenko. And his father was, of course, one of these mercenaries who came to work for our country. And... Um, and if you read any of his books, you know that they do everything they want. Uh, there are, there's no right or wrong. And then these guys are churned out. And, um, now this I have um, in here because this is about the royal family of um, Saudi Arabia. And um, my husband was... This is how my husband's gotten his power. Um, because my husband went to a private boys' school on scholarship. He was hooked the same way Oswald was, um, homosexually. Mm -hmm. And the Saudi, the three oldest Saudi boys, were also hooked homosexually. The first one to come over after the uncle had been murdered 
his uncle was a really good guy, and he favored the British. So these uh, saboteurs, these communists, who oh, were now in... Now, when you say uncle, you're not making reference like man from uncle. Eh? No, the uncle of, of okay. the Saudi royals. I, I just wanted to make a connection between that uh, television series. And but Mansour was killed. Man, it was Mansour who was, who was poisoned in Paris. Right. Okay. And my husband went to school with him. And now there's one of them involved with the Marine Corps. He's, he's kind of... All right, this is the recruiter for my husband. Um, I'm sorry it's not a better picture, but it was faxed to me, and they took um, the originals. This was a copy of an old one. His name was Charles Caddock, and he was a homosexual. Borland was a homosexual. Okay, I need um, you to hold it up about two inches. There, this goes. Charles Caddock died in the Saudi... Um, one of the Saudi mansions in, uh, outside of Marseille where you, they used to have the group sex orgies. It's a place called Es Le Rose. Okay. And, um, okay. okay. I think that's... Then, then we get into the diary. What's, what's this one? Oh, yeah, this is um, okay, one of my husband's uh, friends who, whom I talked to about some things that were going on. He was on, on the ship with my husband, okay, Ed Townley. Did you mention any of these during our interviews? No, no I, don't, I didn't mention okay. Ed Townley, so he's not. Right. Let me see if there's anything here. Um, yeah. Uh, when I was going through, they've taken so many of the originals, um, I met with Ollie Whipple. Now, Ollie Whipple is another Marine intelligence person who um, told me about Dale Dorman. Okay, do we have any pictures? No. All we need to reduce on this tape here is pictures. Okay. Or documents that are significant to anything we may have Engelhart, uh, my, my husband's getting mail Major. for an Engelhart. Joseph and uh, I know that there's a connection. He's, there's money's being laundered. Um, this is um, a uh, presidential citation copy of one for my husband. Okay. Oh, and this number is important because this is not his Social Security number. And you can find out a lot by that number. I think it's, it's either 077... Uh, 170, or, but that number, you can find out a lot about my husband from that. Oh, here it is, 077670. Yes. Oh. These are certificates of what? When he rises in rank. Oh, I see. From one, one rank to Major. the other. Captain. We, we went from Colonel all the way back. I see. He was, uh, let's see. So next up after Colonel is... Uh, general. General. He didn't make General. Because of his wife's mishap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that you, kind you, of put him back a little bit. You missed him, huh? Uh, no. No, I mean his first wife. Oh. oh. Her, her dad. Yeah. Which was not... Here, um, he was with the U.S. Defense Liaison Group in Indonesia, okay. where they were training assassins on um, t Timor. They have a, a little factory for assassins and terrorists that was started by Mountbatten. Okay. Okay. This is NATO headquarters. Um, oh. These are, these are notes by his, his a Marine Corps friend of his from Princeton um, who uh, was in his class and who helped me a little bit to understand what was going on. But this is interesting in his handwriting because it says, Robertson says Kay has spoken of abuses, George spending up to the limit, 33000 on credit cards. He says an intervention often uh, might, you know, might be good. 
uh, J.R., Jim Robertson, is disturbed by Kay's stories, and this is J.R.'s number. Well, who is Jim Robertson now but the head of the Justice Department Criminal Division? And this is in, you know, in his handwriting. They've taken the originals. Um, Mike Kimmel it was mentioned to me by uh, Jim Proctor, who has written this. Mike Kimmel is the son of the famous admiral who was the head of Pearl Harbor at the Pearl Harbor bombing. And my theory is that um, these guys take the sons of generals and then they, they suck them in to, to their, their little thing. Jack Herman uh, in the dark. Jack Herman is, was my husband's uh, roommate from Brooklyn, whose father was Barbara Streisand's um, doctor and who is really literally kind of a basket case since he graduated from Princeton. Siegel is the president of the class. John Wilhelm, I think he's related to Charlie Wilhelm, whom my husband's now working for. He's in intelligence. We have a picture of him in the uh, reading. Yeah, we do have a picture of John Wilhelm. Murdered or something happens to me. He's, and I'm really scared when I talk about this. All right. The, the more you Thanks. talk about it, the more you talk about it, and the more people know, the more safe you are. This guy, his name is V.W. Wooten. He was a, um, and his son Wallace, he said it was his son. This is the license number, ZYF3977, Chrysler LeBaron, Maroon. The time, uh, it was 5.30.96, 2 o'clock, from about 2 until 4.30 in the afternoon. They were parked there, and on his clipboard, he had personal data. He, he had a book entitled Religions of the World. He was obviously studying Islamic religions, because that was, you know, what the thing. Two army pea green coats, his curriculum vita, and he had 21 years of service with the Air Force, among the top, I couldn't read the rest of that, experience 1992 to present, Chief of Security, K.I. Sawyer, Commander of 350 Persons, provides protection, top secret security, education, master's degree, bachelor's degree, squadron officer, Air Force Staff College, fundamentals of total, probably total quality, I don't know, awards, air training command, member of the Marquette, he's a fraternal order of police member. But this is interesting, 1991 to 1992, provost marshal at Keflavik, Iceland, which is where all of this, the drug smuggling and stuff goes through that, that air, airport. Mm -hmm. Staff supervisor, 500 people, brief U.S. ambassador during the visit of the Pope John. He, he okay. was guarding. And this guy again is who? Was uh, guarding my neighborhood. B.W. Wooten? Wooten. Yeah. All right. All right. This is just a letter from Jim Proctor to Mike Kimmel, who was the son of the famous uh, Admiral, head of um, um, Admiral Kimmel, World War II's, um, you know, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And it says, it seems George has recently disappeared from home for short periods. Um, Kay's trying to talk to everyone she believes who knew George better than average, both in reference to where he might be and in perhaps a more important sense, what makes him tick. Apparently, he, this pattern predates their marriage by quite a lot. She's coming to Washington sometime the week of March the 4th through the 9th, but at a minimum, she would like a call from you. Her number in Virginia Beach is that. I saw your picture in the 35th reunion book, sailing off Shadyside, blah, blah, blah. And both of these were Princeton roommates of my husband. Okay. This is um, from uh, the Princeton... Um, military ROTC book, which has the names of the men who were commissioned in the Marine Corps at the time my husband was. There's George Raymond Griggs, and there's Jim Proctor, who's handwriting in letter to the other guy. Okay. All right? And, and Tom Lewis, I think, is in there. <coughs> this, these are just more notes. Okay. Um, this is a medical complaint. Uh, when after I was battered and beaten, I tried to get copies of my pictures. They, they wouldn't let me have them. From the medical? Yeah, they, they wouldn't. Um, these are just some little things about 
it's not that important. I was just writing down things I remembered. <coughs> um, I don't think this is really, this is just about some of his background. Um, yeah. No, this is not really, these are just some legal things. Oh, one, yeah. Um, I had so many break-ins in my house, and uh, this was one, and they always had a Marine, 20-year Marine as a police officer, who would interview me and say, oh, well, there's nothing, you know, nothing wrong. You just, you know, you're just imagining things. Well, this particular incident, um, they were SEALs. They were dressed in black. They were amphibious men. My neighborhood is surrounded by water. And not only did they break into my house, in my car, they, they were interrupted by a neighbor's dog, a Doberman kind of dog, who chased them, and they left my suitcase in Judge Reed's woods. I guess they were intending to, you know, to get it the next day or something. But the interesting thing is my neighbor, Mrs. Cummings, saw them, and she had been noticing the white van, which I had also been noticing in the neighborhood. And she reported it to the police, and they did nothing about it. And the very day that we had a robbery, she, they had tried to break into her house because it looks out over my house during the day, like the day before. And um, she talked to the same police officer, and he didn't even tell her there had been a break-in in my house. And they broke, not only did they break into my car, but they broke into my brother's cars. All, you know, there are all these houses around, but only, and they took my brother's, um, some of my brother's um, things. This is just about what she described to me two weeks before the cars were vandalized. Her, anyway, okay. Okay, that's, this is just describing that. Officer Satterwhite. I would send things to Jewel McGee. Um, these are just, I, I, I had a lot of things going on in my house where they were, they were doing things. Oh, yeah, this is um, from the alumni list of Princeton, and I don't have the... the in other words, the Saudi royals are in the alumni class list, but they're not in, in this particular one. But um, if you call the Hun School and you get a list of the alumni, then you um, will find the Saudis are there. Um, now this, the CFR list, this is why I have, have this. This is the CFR, Council of Foreign Relationship Members, and all of these I've I've heard about or, or met some of them. My husband's mentioned. Um, there's some that are also skull and bones at the same time. It's the Yale leadership crowd. Howard Baker, George Ball. Uh, Steve Bell I know really well. He, he is a friend of my former uh, husband's family. Do we, did we mention him in the interview at all, Steve Bell? No. John Blum we did mention. Um, my son is married to his daughter. John Blum, uh, he's a uh, Brooklyn, uh, Yale-y. He's, um, he's, he's, his best friend is this Rockefeller guy, um, not no, Jay. His son is married to your daughter? No, his daughter is his married son. to my son. His daughter is married to your And they met his father, they're, they're Jewish, you know, part Jewish. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting to me is that, um, see, I married the governor's grandson, and my son is John Garland Pollard the fourth. I mean, you know, you're talking old Virginia. Mm -hmm. kind of, I, I was like a brooding mare for, for them. I mean, you know, I was a bird of Virginia. It was kind of like, you know, you marry this, this John Garland Pollard. Well, my son went to Woodbury Forest, which is where George Bush's son went and Oliver North's son went. Okay. My son went there for four years, and he met Alice Blum, who, you know, they have a place in Maine, a place. And um, 
There's a lot I know about John Blum, but I didn't mention that. I mean, there's so much. John Brokaw's name is in John Brokaw, um, Califano, Jimmy Carter, Chafee, Bill Clinton, Cisneros, Cheney, so forth. Oh, Hodding. Hodding Carter is a real close personal friend of my husband's and a Princeton graduate. Okay, look this up to us. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Hodding Carter. Okay, and so is William Crow. And who is he? He's a, a Princeton classmate of my husband's who uh, was um, what does in he do? the Carter administration, intelligence. Okay. All, all mostly intelligence. And they're not intelligent. Michael Dukakis, Andrew Biddle Duke, Larry Eagleburger, he and Henry Kissinger were good friends. Einhorn, oh, no, I didn't mention him, so I'm not. Okay. Farstall, he's the son of James Farstall, who was murdered. Okay. Alan Frost, I know him. Firestone, Gelb, David Bergen. Anybody you might have mentioned in the tapes. Let's see, I'll go real quick. I may have mentioned David Hoops, but I don't think so. No, okay. These are just CFR people. Yeah. Henry Kissinger. Oh, another good friend of my husband's is Cord Meyer and Bob McFarlane, really good friend of my husband. Pelletro, real good friend of George's. Uh, the Pincus family. Oh, Consuelo Rice, she's a good friend of my husband's. Uh, the Rostos, all, all four of the Rostos. Yeah, these are bad guys, major, major bad guys. David Rockefeller is a friend of my my son's. Um, he, he came to my son's wedding. David Rockefeller? Mm -hmm. In Connecticut. It was in Connecticut. Mm. George Schultz, really good friend of, of George's and, and everybody. He's, he's a big power guy. He's, he knows a lot. He's the one who went to Clinton's and told Clinton not to run, that he, they were going to get him. Yeah. And had a meeting, and Clinton threw something at him and stuff. Call Sarah McClendon. Sarah was full of that story for a number of days. Harry Train lives at the beach, and he's, um, I know him very well. He's part of the New World Order crowd, former. Strobe Talbot, another good friend of my husband's, really good friend. David Stockman. Dave Stockman, he's a Michigan boy. Oh, Casper Weinberger, Cap Weinberger. That's it. What about Stockman? Oh, Casimir Yost, I mentioned him. I'm sure that's Mary Clark Yo's son. I'm sure. Yeah. I, I know it. Okay. Do you know? Do you know Mary Clark? Okay. That's that. Um, this this I think is interesting. This this is a an intelligence and electronic warfare operations book distributed by the Army, and what what it shows me is how um, arrogant they are about subversion and, and deception. In other words, this is this is just a regular old field manual, you know, 1983 or whatever. And um, deception is is so important. Um, and deep operations, deep cover. Uh, now they don't have the word. Open that up again where it says deep cover. Let me get a shot of that. Okay. The, um, thing that the special operations is what my husband was head of operations. Um, the electronic warfare, um, an important part of electronic warfare is deception and knowing everything about the person, not just knowing about the target. Now, human beings are called targets. Women now are being targeted by the military, right. wives like me. So they'll have a team finding out everything about my grandparents, my family, uh, you know, who my friends are, to try and discredit me. And of course, everybody who is flagged, who is a target, they'll jam, jamming is a deliberate <coughs> radiation or re-radiation of electromagnetic energy to prevent or downgrade the reception of information by a receiver. The, um, 
multi-spot jamming is directed against more than one frequency. Uh, in other words, they jam the, I've had my, down, my caller ID downloaded, uh, Sarah McClendon called my house and was told she couldn't reach me. It was a military base. Um, MED is conducted. MED is manipulative, manipulative electronic deception. Uh, simulative, simulative electronic de deception is SED. MED is conducted by altering the electromagnetic profile of friendly forces. It seeks to counter hostile electronic warfare and signet activities by manipulating friendly electronic magnetic emissions. This is done by magnifying the technical characteristics and profiles which would provide an accurate picture of friendly intentions by deliberately transmitting false information. Um, in other words, they are um, interested in um, deception as, as part of their, their um, you know, line of attack. Okay, cool. Okay. <coughs> it's just, it just goes on and on and on. Well, it, it authenticates it. <coughs> they teach this stuff. Yeah. Uh, those, then those single pictures you had. Oh, yeah. Snaps. Oh. Real handsome guy. Uh, his, his dad was a Nazi soldier, okay, was with the, the big, you know, elite. His name is Ken Millis, and that's his uh, mother, Flo, from Seven Mile, Ohio. Really nice. That's the that former Marine chief of staff, while my husband's wife is being put in the grave. Let me zero in here again a little bit here. These are some original letters that he wrote to his lady friend when he was married to his first wife. Okay, now, now once again, these, uh, the significance here... Is he is a Marine colonel who uh, was always there when George would sort of disappear, but he was chief of staff. Um, okay, and the ladies are? His wife and his mother and my husband and, and me. Okay. Okay. Uh, whoops, whoops. Get, oh, I'm sorry. Pictures. Sorry. Um, okay, the other one shows uh, that you're actually human. Yeah. Dog lover. Yeah. Princeton Ashtray. And who's in the picture above? That's uh, his first wife's mother and his, um, his daughter and his daughter-in-law with the baby that I just pray that there would be a granddaughter and um, this is Melinda, little Melinda, in front of the dollhouse in our yard. Hmm. Okay. Okay. This is his first wife. Can't tell you what. With a dog. Let's hold those right about oh I don't know. Let me put something up this so we can be on. How about this? There we go. There we go. Just lay them off top of that. All right. I never knew Sue. That's his first wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Yep. This is George and his cousin Bob. They're big drinkers in that family. I don't know who the other people are. Okay. This is George in, in one of his rages. This was in the morning too, too without yeah. without yeah, alcohol. Gotta, <laughs> gotta back up in order to get focused. Back to the uh, the raging one, the okay. one we did before. Okay. 
I mean, I'm scared. You, you're, talking, you're talking major injuries I've had, broken bones, um, and I reach out for help, and then I become the target. So you're taking a picture while this rage is going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, at risk was of my where, life. Was he where you were taking the photo? He, uh, he's in a total, <clears throat> unbelievable state. Okay, next. It's called the bizarre, bizarre state. This is just, you know, when he's he walks around nude when he gets in these stages. Okay. Can't help. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't. I just don't know how to. This is him again. He'd take a lot of the pictures and cameras. I'd, he'd break cameras. Because I was trying to get some, somebody to help mm -hmm. me protect my life. Just, just get some help. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all. I wasn't trying to tell on him or, you know, be, be a bad... I was just trying to get some help. And I was scared. I mean, th this is the normal look. Um, he, he has the look of someone's a little deranged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a wee bit. This, I mean, this, this is a guy working now for Wilhelm in Florida. I mean, giving secrets away, that, that's the least of the thing. You know. This is mother, former mother-in-law and me, Cody. There he is in his bedroom. Okay, now, his particular state of mind here is what? He, he looks a little defiant. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, what's he doing? It's fine if he's a nudist, but, I, I mean, I didn't know that. You didn't say, I, I like, I'm a nudist. You know, it's just... It's like I was married to a stranger. This is the George that I, I thought I knew. Okay, I'll tell you what, on that picture there. You know that little rule of thirds I told you about? Yeah. <laughs> Whoever took that picture did not know about it. Oh, right. They have, them on, have you on the bottom third, not the upper third. Um, where was this taken? Um, at the Norwegian Lady statue. Okay. And this had to do, they gave me a, a Norwegian Viking ship that day. That was just, that was a port master of Moss, Norway, George. Okay. Happy, happy George. This is another, you know, I think we have that one. Oh, let's do a happy George, too. Yeah, let's do happy George. This is, this is George on the Millis's boat with his little Princeton hat, and uh, we're going out in the boat. Okay. <laughs> And this is, again, the one on the, when he was just, he wouldn't eat for two days, you know. Just Passed out, okay. Yeah. This is him in the yard. He'd, he'd do that nude in the yard, you know. He, it was just so, I don't know. Bizarre. Yeah. Now, he had the menage a trois, menage a quatre, with this couple. Um, this is his wife, Sue, who's with Jim Earl, and this is Nancy Earl and George. And they would do the, the group sex, you know, the, the swinging or whatever you call it. And I had lots of people tell me that, and yet he's, you know, very trusted and they know everything kind of about him. This is um, another woman he was sleeping with in Beirut, whose husband was the assistant director at the American University of Beirut, who was an Arab. Um, she was an intelligence guy, person. And her son is Kashmir. Okay. This is just, you know, some bruises of me. That's not very nice to look at. There are injuries. This is George with his bruise. <laughs> Let's see. But he looks like a little happier George. Oh, he's always smiling when he's drinking. <laughs> Bless his heart. You know, he's always smiling. Okay. So I'm trying to... He, uh, oh, this, this was a secretary in Indonesia that, and I know this is kind of terrible, but he and Anne Bouchou's husband and George, they would all sleep together. He went to visit her parents in Australia. Um, and he told, you know, he told me about that. Now, this is Louis Buell, the famous general, who was the one who was going to get him, you know, he was going to be a, a general, but Louis died too soon. There's Louis again. Um, 
his Halab's address. You can tell that, you know, he tore it up. <laughs> but I've went and retrieved it. There's Halab and company, Halab. Uh, Halab. And these are just some letters to Anne Bushu, another person. Uh, that's basically it, I think. I think we've got all of it. Okay. That's it. All right, then any other photos you? Yeah, when would that have been? Oh, 93, somewhere around in there. 94. November. Hang on a second, don't move it. Okay. This is Mr. T. Parker Hose, <laughs> Burma assassin, <laughs> friend of my husband's, um, owned one shipping agency when he met my husband, knew he was a friend of George Bush's, wound up with eight or nine. Mm -hmm. Changed from being a Democrat to a Republican to introducing George Bush in 96 when he came to speak to an, uh, a banquet that he arranged for ostensibly for John Warner. But when, you know, they did a fundraising thing, you know, you meet George Bush and Barbara, pay a thousand bucks or 500 bucks. Well, he, he's a mover and shaker um, and a nudist and a, and a group sex guy. Mm -hmm. His sons are real messed up. But he's my husband's best buddy. That's it. That's George's. And that's at his farm. And we would go to the farm and George and Parker would go out on the boat for two and three hours. And I thought, what is going on out there, you know? Um, okay. Here's, here's a little thing about T. Parker Host became chairman of T. Parker Host Incorporated. David Weibel. You know, that's just Parker. Yes. This is his wife, Anne, and I introduced him to her. Good work. Her. She's my school friend, you know. Is she still married to him? Yeah. I mean, he's loaded. You know, she she wants a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Her her uncle is um, one of the guys who went to the moon, Collins. Her grandfather was this big army general. So Parker's, I didn't know Anne was all that well connected to the army. Her, her uncle was head of the army's big, um, after he retired, library or you know, their records, yeah. and her grandfather, Lawton Collins, was the head of Vietnam before, you know, I mean, you're talking major, if you're Army, interested in the Army, mm -hmm. so I introduced her to Parker, and he was just a little, <coughs> a little anyway, What's okay, George and, and the, the Earls. Oh, uh, that's the swap. The swap. Swap team. Mm -hmm. Swap and team. That, that, that within that picture... Uh, each maid is swapped. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. She's not standing behind her husband. Oh, no. No, and they're not sitting with each other either. They sit on top of the other's lap. Yeah. Now, this is a Norwegian couple. No, you don't need to see that. Oh, this is the way he left the kitchen yeah. uh, when he took off. Okay. That's his beer machine there, by the way. Okay, this is just us at a way. Oh, that's a nice picture. Okay. Now, that's the fact you... Spent time together. Oh, yeah. And there's yeah. even a date in this particular photo. Mm -hmm. 94, 10, 15, 94. Let's see. This is a little good here. This gives a summary of his background. You might need a copy of that. This is his whole, it's not really, doesn't go into the operations. You know, when he was in Jakarta and Naples and Shay okay. and Beirut. Next page. Uh -huh. That's it. Yeah. I think that's all. All right.